Welcome to the Shadow Hawker Sessions. It is your self-service vending machine of education for this, our first week of semester, week one. Welcome aboard. Today's session is going to focus on introducing you to a couple of the concepts and ideas, doing a little bit of uh, self-service planning, and also bringing you up to speed with one of the open challenges in the course that helps you earn participation and engagement marks. So the first open challenge in participation and engagement is to create a team identity. And I know that since you are soloing this in the Shadow Hawker session, it could be really easy not to feel part of the subject, which is why we have these identities and these logos and these elements and these challenges is so that you are still part of the crew. Now, there are a limited number of spaces to display a logo at the start of each of the lectures. So this is week one and the logo challenge has just been issued. So obviously I got to do the first round of logos. In week nine, the public holiday week, I'm also taking that week to do a round of logos, which means there are 10 weeks remaining. Each week has a Daywalker, Night Stalker and Shadow Hawker session logo available. So obviously you're in the pre-recorded. You won't get to see what the people create in the Daywalkers, Night Stalkers, except we are putting up a public thread where you submit your content. You submit it to the forum and I pick up the file, the image, whatever it is you've submitted as the logo, as the identity image for the group, and I embed it in the live learning seminar slides for the appropriate week. Welcome, this is how the challenge is gonna go. It is also a bonus challenge. It helps you score bonus points to the participation and engagement mark. Now, each week in the live learning event, there'll be the Daywalkers live learning. That's the ident, uh, course ident logo. The Opportunity is to do a, a logo that represents the class and also perhaps a catchphrase, a slogan, a tagline. Get your creativity going. There's the Night Stalkers live learning event and terrible puns are more than edible uh, to my way of seeing the world. But also logos, custom work. It can be your own hand-drawn art or you can work with the tools that we're providing, things like Canva, even PowerPoint. And of course, hey friends, the Shadow Hawker. You do actually have a different uh, logo on the widescreen than you do in the pre-records, and that's because most of the time, the Daywalkers and the Night Stalkers won't know. And the Shadow Hawkers, it can just be a logo without a slogan, but you know, logos and slogans are also good. I like that. So this is the first of the participation and engagement challenges. There will be others. And this is your way to stay connected, to contribute into the course. Now this is your, Weekly reminder that these course content blocks are pre-recorded. They have been all produced prior to the start of semester. So if content drift does occur, if it's minor, well, it'll happen. But if it's major, we will do a course correction. We'll do a reissue. So in the UI here, it's the intro week. Let's get started. Let's get you warmed up and practicing. Remember, grab your files from the Wattle site. Make sure you're giving yourself the best access. This is the Shadow Sessions. This is how it's gonna go. Remind you that you still can access the Slido uh, through the QR code or slido.com and the um, ident number there. We're going to do these workshops. The other thing about this Slido access is that these are tools that were designed for interactive real-time live events, and we are pushing them to their limits to incorporate them to a pre-recorded event. After the seminar, there are two things I'm gonna ask you to do. The first thing is I want you to ensure that you are posting on Wattle, but also I want you to go out and use the Padlet. Now there's a rehearsal Padlet, uh, link will be provided on the Wattle site. And the rehearsal Padlet doesn't, it's anonymous, you can just muck about, try it out, get yourself comfortable with, this is a tool that's going to be available. The real deal, the real uh, recap, weekly recaps, require you to sign in. And they do this because they are part of the participation and engagement scoring opportunities. You do not want to have one of a big event in the participation and engagement be entirely anonymous so you can't track down who did what. Padlets, the thing about them is that there are three questions or more each week. And the questions are loosely structured around just an observation of the course. What caught your interest? What caught your attention? Uh, if there's anything you want clarified, and if there's anything you'd like uh, me to explore further. And also there's that sort of reflective element uh, 
to the paddle exercises. These are basically training you to look at each week by the week uh, so that you built up this body of insight, understanding and observation for the ePortfolio. So the Padlets are training tools for the ePortfolio and also they are ways to score participation and engagement and also they're a way to stay connected to the course on a weekly basis. Of course, Wattle's there just to be a complete riot of fun down on the forum. So get on it, post the thread, reply to people, just have an interaction, have, have fun with it. So welcome to the post-apocalypse. Also welcome to the brave new world of 2019 part two, where a whole bunches of people want to go and say, hey, there never was an apocalypse. And everything we learned about digital delivery for the past two years, could we stop learning it now? Uh, if that's your situation and you're really looking forward to never having to Zoom again, yeah, Soz is not the right course for you. But also, I'm mindful of the fact that our post-apocalypse is still pretty apocalyptic. Uh, we've still got things that we're going to have to deal with as they arise, and I will have that in mind. And it's the other reason why I've built a backup system as a primary. Shadowhawk is my dear friends. You are the prime core of this course. This content was written first, it is recorded first, then I go off and I do the live events. In the event of something happening to me during this semester, congratulations squad, you are the other leaders. You are this event, these pre-recorded sessions, are set up to see out the course, even in the event of me getting TKO'd by something along the way. Now a couple of things I want to talk to. Uh, most of the times in the seminars, it's going to be dynamic, interactive, me asking you to do tasks, fill out things. Occasionally, I want to talk to something beyond just the... There's the slides for me doing all the talky at the screen things, but also this is contextualizing. So a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. First is the notion of survivorship bias. Uh, this is really important in e-marketing because we usually see the success stories. We rarely get to triage why. And quite often the success is entirely due to random factors that you couldn't replicate. Right place, right time is not a strategy, it's a luck. But equally, right place, right time can not pan out. There are also certain places where there are predispositions towards scale by sheer virtue of if you are running a live event in London, you've got the dis in the space of London and the tube network connection, you've got more people than we've got in most of the coasts of Australia. So sheer lottery of birth and lottery of circumstances, that's the thing to be aware of. So when you come to start measuring yourself and your own achievements, what I'm interested in is your ability to triage success and failure, your ability to autopsy success and failure. If it goes horribly right, being able to cope with it. If it goes horribly wrong, being able to cope with it. But also being able to cope with it going mildly right and mildly successful and being not best practice, but pretty solidly ordinary practice. And that's one of the things we want to get your attention around really early is that a lot of the things that you'll see in terms of write-ups, results, journal articles, YouTube videos, they're all about the success stories. Second thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about ritual. We are going to engage in a whole bunch of stuff in e-marketing, one of which is this session, these Shadow Hawker sessions. And part of that is I want to talk about the rituals that we use to signal going to university. But I want to raise this idea of baseball magic. And baseball magic is the idea of ritual and taboo, things that you do, things that you don't do, that enable you to feel a sense of control over the world. It does not matter if there is actual control over the world. You feel a better connection. Because one of the things we know as marketers, there's a whole series of consumer behavior theories that underpin the role of feeling to involvement, involvement to engagement, engagement to heightened cognitive and emotive processing, which leads to heightened recall, which leads to stronger memories, which leads to greater engagement. So using a little baseball magic, bringing that, that ritual, bringing that starting point of, this is a process I'm going to use to engage in the class, can have some positive outcome. So let's give you a chance to test out the self-service. So this is exercise one. How it's going to go is I will ask again that you set a 10 minute timer. Well, I'll ask for the first time. Get your smartphones out, crack open the, ten, the timer app, get us on to 10 minutes and I'll tell you when to start. I'll tell you when, you'll tell yourself when to stop. And we've got a little thing set up to help you on the way here. But the task at hand, what I'm going to ask you to do is using the Word document and you'll see that we 
put a screenshot and we put the arrow. So this is basically replacing me talking about it in the seminar, but using your first Word document and 10 minutes right in that Word document. Don't sit there for 10 minutes staring at the ceiling, just hammer away at it, hands on keyboards, get in there. The questions that you're facing are, what's the ritual that you use to signify I'm going to university. What What is your pre-campus routine when you're going to go in for, and you can think pre-pandemic, you can think post-pandemic. So you're heading down to the Murray Ray to catch a lecture or go to a tutorial. What's your ritual? What's your process? What's What lets you think it's university time now? With that, having done that, the next question is, what makes it university time when you're doing something like this workshop? So coming into the Shadowhawk sessions, what's your what's your setup? What do you do to say it is university time? Do you get yourself a favorite lucky cup of coffee? Do you set yourself up with your favorite brew? What what's your what's your ritual? Document it, write it down. And then what you want to do is ask yourself a question of what do you personally do to signal to yourself? What do you do to say, what do you do so that others can see? It's uni time, but what do you do for yourself to say it's go time? How this works is we now have the, the pause, so please take the opportunity to pause the recording here and start your timer. Welcome back. I assume you paused the recording. If you didn't, go rewind a bit. When the play button goes, we are back in action and we're about to be back underway. So let's talk briefly about the, uh, the debrief here. In your document, you should have a written set of answers to those questions. If you didn't, Rewind, go back, give yourself another 10 minutes, do it again. Uh, the great thing about doing this in the Shadowhawk mode is that you are not suddenly find yourself going, oh, okay, I prepped nothing and now I go to talk to a room full of people in a seminar. We don't, you don't have that pressure. Instead, what you have is you might have a bit of the loneliness. You've, you, you've typed this thing up and you're like, that's all well and good, Steve, but now what? Well, this is what the forums are about. We're gonna pose a bunch of these questions into the forums because I know people have had a chance to think about it in live learning, think about shadows, and I'm gonna chuck some of these questions up there. And shadow team, you are an integral part of making that forum work because this is where you get to talk to each other. And if you can spark the conversations around these prompts and cues, that is going to give us collectively, the whole subject, a really good driver and motivation. So get in there, post up your stuff. Probably find it'll be easier to go through, do the whole event first, then come back and discuss things in the forum afterwards. Next thing I want to talk about, uh, self-reflection. The ePortfolio is a big part of this course. It's 40%. I've set out with this season, with this semester, with this subject to build in processes to let you train in the method, scaffold your skills, so that when you hit the ePortfolio at the end, it's not a, oh my God, 40% reflective task, arg, dying now. And to do that, we're gonna teach you and we're gonna train you. So a big one of this is the self the self reflection and the documentation. So you'll see you know, that we have a class review template. This is not how the ePortfolio is going to work. This is a data collecting tool for which if I get an ePortfolio that consists just of you sticking these class review templates in there, I am going to fail your ePortfolio because you didn't do the task and well, you don't get the reward. Instead, the purpose of these and the reason they're here is that they are here as tools. The questions you get asked are an opportunity. What was the week about? Summary, what did I learn? What can I use? What did you understand? What are you feeling good about? Like what's the knowledge area? Like, hey, I can draw on that later. What wasn't clear? Maybe something you can post up to the Padlet as well. What can I use from what I've learned this week into my project? And what connects to how I engage with the internet and what connects to how I'm using this and how I could review my overall project? We're gonna teach you 12 discrete units of content that are sequentially linked. In week nine, you'd be like, hey, if I reuse that stuff from three, the stuff from six, that would work. And the other thing we wanna do is give you a prompt each week to say, hey, what's the data you need to capture? What do I need to record? What do I wanna have available to me at the end? The stuff I need to save to a folder on the hard drive, the stuff I should be uploading to my Dropbox, my OneDrive, my Google Docs. Plus, we've got some trackers. Um, how are you performing against timeline? Now, if you use these on a 12 week, you run 12 of these out. When you come to do the tasks of the ePortfolio, you've got a big data set and you've thought about things. So that's why they're here. Now, I mentioned the ePortfolio from the outset is because it's got awful. It, the software that I'm asking you to use is terrible. 
it is so ill-suited to task, it's perfect. And the reason why it's perfect is, as an e-marketer, I have to use tasks, tools, and software that are really bad, are really terrible, that I didn't get a say in. you got to work with that. And that's just a thing that has to happen. You know that when you get to be top of the tree, you don't go and make bad decisions because you have experienced it along the way up and go, that sucked. You don't go, well, I was able to deal with this terrible platform. Others must suffer. It's like, no, you go, suffering sucks. I don't want other people to suffer. Let's give them a better version. But right now, you're going to need to learn how to just grimace, grit your teeth, and punch through terrible poorly suited software platforms because most of your professional career as an e-marketer will involve some point of having to use something, whether it's Drupal as a backend to a website, whether it's a custom homebrew, very expensive, not quite as good as a free thing, um, interface to manage a website. Welcome to life integrated, work integrated experience. And this is as bad as authentic an assessment task as you can get, is you are reflecting on your experiences of doing a real world project, but also you're using a platform you don't want to use that doesn't quite do the job properly. Whilst you think about the platform that you chose that you definitely wanted to use and did it your way. So that's why it's here. Uh, it is a deliberate feature. It's, a, it's there for a reason. All right, the portfolio itself will not be available until week three. That's also part of the, I'm telling you to use something you can't get to look at until week three because it hasn't gone live yet, because we can't create the portfolio until we have the student enrollments. The enrollments don't close until week three. Therefore, everything's just the way it is. The last thing in the document itself is the self-characterization sketch. This is probably the mission critical thing for week one. You need this. This is part of the compulsory elements of the ePortfolio. So go look at the ePortfolio video details and materials that are up in the assessment section of the Waddle and fill out your self-characterization sketch. It is a reflective task. It is a challenge. It's not easy either. Um, it's okay to struggle. It's okay to go, this, this, this was tough. Because it's week one, it should be tough. You don't know your way around it. You'll do two to three of these across the course of the um, semester. You'll, got the option to do one in week six and you have the compulsion to do one in week 12. But the idea here is that we want to give you a qualitative benchmark of yourself this week as you've started the course. If you're watching this in weeks two, three or later, look, close enough. Um, as you've hit this slide, hi, benchmark yourself. So documentation that you need to do for yourself outside the um, event is your self characterization. Exercise number two, here we go. Let's get you in. Personal goal for the semester, six minutes on the clock, timer at your leisure when the pause hits. Your task here is to write for yourself a goal for the semester. Now, in the Word doc, it does say, what do I want to achieve by doing this course this semester at this point in my university studies? Uh, I'm going to broaden that up a little if you want to. Just be, what do you want to get out of the semester overall? But if you have some specifics around what do you want to achieve by doing this subject, this point, because there's a context. This is semester two. I don't know which year it is for you, but there's a context. So put your context in. Why Why do you want to do, what do you want to achieve? Uh, you'll see that there's a little thing there, the learn, do, feel. We want to address that in a moment. But first, we want to get you to write that open-ended goal. What's that goal that you want for this subject? What is it you want to do? Please take the moment to pause the recording. I actually start the timer, then pause the recording. Welcome back. Glad to have you back on board. I assume things went well for you. Uh, what we're going to do now is talk briefly about what that task used, why you had to. Do. So the goal here is literally that, a goal. It's a week one, it's an open end, it's non-binding. It's just to get you to think, why am I doing this course? What is it I want to get out of the course? Hang on to this document because we're going to come back to this task a bit later. All right, the last thing I'm going to direct you out to do, the First, live learning is always the longest live learning because I've got to explain things along the way. The post room post, this is my recommendations for what to do after you finish doing this. Uh, so think about what, what is it you want to do for your portfolio. Definitely get your, make certain you've got your character sketch, your self assessment character sketch, save that into your portfolio folder. Get into the forum, say hi to people. If you haven't posted in the intro thread, please do so now. But also get in there and have a chat to people. Shadows. I. Thoroughly recommend the use of bullet points, uh, the bullet point journal, the bullet journals, 
as a tool to enable self-guided self-tracking. There will be some stuff around bullet journals on the Waddle site, so do feel free to explore the Waddle site. Click on links, open folders, follow things, press buttons, practice your curiosity, engage your in curiosity. And lastly, up in the forums, uh, if there's anything you would like to know more, you can either use the Padlet or you can use the forum. Just if there's stuff you want covered in the course, we had a bit of a chance to chat about this in the live event. We want to give you a chance to give your input as well. So what would you like to know more about? And uh, as always, we will close out every session we'll close out with the back-to-back -back slides of the contact intel of ways and means by which you can reach me. Email is usually the best and consultation booking times. And with that, session's complete. Cheers, mate. Welcome to week one. Glad to have you on board. Mm -hmm.